Ask the Podcast Coach for August 2nd, 2014. Let's get ready to podcast. Oh, it's Saturday morning, and you've got podcast questions, and we've got podcast answers. Welcome to Ask the Podcast Coach. I'm your host, Dave Jackson, from the School of Podcasting, and this is where we do answer any little podcasting question you have on your mind. You can call in 845-262-2401, and joining me right over there, the one, the only, don't be fooled by cheap imitations, and that would be uh, Jim Collison, who is joining us from Atlantis today. I'm swimming underwater this morning, trying, yeah. to, trying to podcast from somewhere underwater, apparently. Yeah, he's. Uh, we don't know what the deal is. We, we had some minor issues today with audio, and... Um, we uh we don't know what's going on, and no, uh, you're just gonna punt. Sometimes you just gotta punt and do the podcast. Yeah, and and Google's free, so we've decided that we're not going to pay them anymore for their service, uh, because well, we kind of aren't doing that anyway. But that's the fun part of free. It's you don't really have a whole lot of. Um, it's not like we can go complain to tech support and uh, and plus by tomorrow, um, you know, it'll be we could probably disconnect and reconnect a couple times, and eventually it would be fine. But uh, well, I'd be late for the show and get all flustered. But at some point, you just got to get through it. That's it. You just uh, you you go through. But hello to the chat room. Of course, you can find us at askthepodcastcoach.com forward slash live, and uh, that's where we're at every Saturday at uh, ten thirty Eastern Standard Time. And uh, as I go over to check, yes, right now we have open phone lines. That's right. That number is 845-262-2401. That is 845-262-2401. Open lines now, which means you call, I click a button, and you are out uh, going over the Internet to the world. To the webs. Yes. So uh, I did get a good question from uh, a friend of mine named Tina who you can find over at homeschoolrealm.com. She has about 50 different websites. And she says, hey, Dave, we're up to uh, 46 uh, episodes now, and the audio files are starting to pile up. According to Windows, I have over 50 gigs of past episodes. I'm in the process of getting all my files on the cloud using various things like Box.net, Dropbox, OneDrive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but none of them will allow this much storage without paying. And I know this is going to just continue to pile up. Yet, I don't want to delete them. Yeah, don't delete them. Um, I want to go, in case I want to go back and repackage them or make a best of show and things like that. Um, and so basically she asked, where do, what do I do with my files? And my files are all on my hard drive. And they're also, I believe they're in Dropbox. I'm using for backup. And the thing that is amazing, now I realize it sounds like she's trying to do this for free. And I'm not sure there's a, you could probably get a USB drive that might be able to, to you could use. But that, again, is not free. Um, OneDrive is a, I think, of the, the different cloud storages, I think they give you the most. That's Microsoft's uh, uh, tool. But the thing to keep in mind, I looked this morning, you can get a terabyte, a terabyte hard drive for 79 bucks. You can get a three terabyte uh, hard drive for 150 And I realize that is far from free, but that is humongoid. That is giant. Because I have to buy one. I, I've been doing video, and if you want to fill up a hard drive, hey, just start doing video. That'll uh, knock that out real, real quick. And so, Jim, do you know of any free storage? Do kind I of know free storage, Dave? So, <laughs> do I? You're, you're asking the storage guy. This when when you put this in the show notes this morning, it was in my sweet spot. I was just like, oh man, we are talking storage. This is awesome. You know, you mentioned one terabyte external. You can get a six terabyte internal now, two ninety nine. So, wow. you know that the the storage prices are dropping. I one thing with fifty gig local, that shouldn't be. I mean, fifty gig on a hard drive is nothing. So I'm not so sure what Tina's concerned about. With her local storage, I know she's trying to back it up to the cloud, and that, that you know, that's a lot different in that sense. Most of even with the free services, 50 gig right now is about the limit if you're going to go absolutely free. Uh, but we did an interview on Thursday night over on my show, Home Gadget Geeks, um, and there's a race right now going on with with uh, storage, and so we had a company called MediaFire. You can just MediaFire.com. I interviewed their CEO. And they've gone all the way to the bottom with one terabyte of cloud storage for $24 a year. 
Whoa. And, yeah. And I was like, how do you do that? Okay. That most of my questions on the show, we haven't produced that, that program yet. So if you're listening live, it'll be coming out on Monday. If you want to go over to the average guy TV and listen to it. But, um, Derek, the CEO, you know, they are, they control all their own storage. They don't use Amazon. A lot of these cloud storage places use Amazon and, and such to, to kind of uh, augment their storage and they got to pay for it. These guys have built an infrastructure. They own all their equipment. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it's an opera. It's well run. It's efficient. Cause that was the question. How do you do that? Dave, you always say that all the time. You don't want to go with some free service cause you know what? The, <laughs> you got to pay the bills, right? And right. advertising model on storage is kind of weird and all those things. So anyways, $24 a year, one terabyte of data and a couple interesting uh, things with it. One is they give you direct uh, direct access to your link. So it's like using a Libsyn or a Blueberry or whatever where you get your file name.mp3 in a web form. You can link your files to these guys. Uh, the, the one caveat is they only give you 10 terabytes of bandwidth. Okay, I'm joking. Only 10 terabytes <laughs> of bandwidth? Most of us podcasters are not even going to use, and that's a month, right? We're not going to use 10 terabytes of bandwidth for our files coming down. If we are, you're in a different league of podcasting from that standpoint. Yeah, that's... So, uh... so it's an amazing... I'm looking at it. I, I, I'd love to say I'd recommend it, but I haven't dug in enough. I haven't used it long enough. I don't want to be one of these podcasters who tries it for a day and then says, oh, I recommend, you know. The, yeah. One of the big drawbacks, no stats. So this isn't a Lipsyn where you're going to put your stuff on there and you're going to get these awesome right. download stats. You're going to have to use like a Blueberry or whatever to, you know, to track your feed. But you could put your, you could store them out there. Don't have to do anything with it. Um, you could, and, and that's just great backup. You could, uh, you could also make it a, a, a CDN, a place to actually store your media files. And again, I'm not, I've got some work to do on this, but it was an interesting uh, an interesting discussion with those guys around around it. And so we'll talk, Dave, I want to talk a little bit more about backup because I think this is an area that people don't really understand very well. Yeah. And uh, Daniel J. Lewis, the one, the only from the Audacity to Podcast is in the chat room. He says, I'm using Amazon Glacier at one cents per gig per month. Yeah, that's... very very cold storage. <laughs> if you're going to be backing it up, that's a great way to do it as well. If you want to do it, if you want to do it that way. Yeah, the the thing to keep in mind with a backup, if we just go to backup kind of 101, it's not a backup until it's in a separate location from your original file. Uh, I actually have people that go, yeah, I, I have it on my hard drive, and then I have uh, they'll they'll get another internal hard drive and they'll back it up on that. I'm like, okay, technically that's a backup, but if your computer catches on fire you've now lost two copies of it. And so I always say, get it someplace not... That way, if your house blows up, you've still got everything you need. In, um, well, and let's look at 50 gig isn't very much. I have 300 gig of data um, for, of my podcast file. So in Daniel's model, a gig a month, that's three bucks a month times... That's, it's actually more expensive to use Glacier than it would be to use for me than to use this this media fire at least uh, in those in those options i think we're going to see a lot of these companies it's a race to the bottom right now and so i think we're going to see yeah. you know uh, google drive has already opened up there i mean for for i forget the pricing i've got a cloud storage guide on my site that's got all the pricing and where everybody's at today uh, with that i got kind of a spreadsheet that lays it out but i think we're going to see microsoft and amazon and google all drop to one terabyte one terabyte right now seems to be the unlimited amount, right? It's going to be really hard for you to fill up one terabyte of data in the cloud. You're just going to have to really work at it. I've got some guys that listen to me that laugh at one terabyte. Oh, oh I got four terabytes. Well, yeah, those that's like that's the one percent. All right. Uh, Daniel has mentioned that I was in voice mode, so I've switched to studio mode. So you guys will have to let me know if I sound. Oh, too. there you go. Now you're sounding sexy. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. Very good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, you know, the audio pieces are pretty small. You know, if you're an, only an audio podcaster and you're doing 50 to 100 meg files, those those won't stack up as fast. No. Um, your video ones, I just was doing some video work this weekend, and, you know, those get in the gigs. So that's where it starts if you're a video podcaster. That's where it starts stacking up pretty fast. Um, and... So even I keep all my audio, I keep all my video, and I'm still under 500, uh, 500 gig of, of total storage with what I'm doing. And I keep a lot. So a terabyte is still a lot of space. Dave, it looks like we have a caller. 
We do. Uh, ending in one five two five. Uh, thanks for calling in. What's your name and number? What's your name and number? That's a uh, that's a whole another podcast. <laughs> what's your name? What's your website? Uh, and what's your question? Uh, hey, Dave and Jim. It's Rim from the Sci Fi Movie Podcast. Hey, buddy. In beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. How, how are you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Hey, I got a question regarding Amazon. Uh, Dave, I know you're just an absolute expert with Amazon. Uh, I I I, play, I played that game for a little bit, but go ahead. Okay. Well. I have on our website, on the scifimoviepodcast.com website, we have affiliate links so people can uh. go to the website and they can use our affiliate link to buy movies. But I'm curious to know how I get hold of that link that I would be able to give people if they want to go shop at Amazon. Is, is there a specific link that I could say, you know, here's the link for our particular affiliate and then just give it to somebody? Would I be able to give somebody a link, and would I be able to find that link somewhere? Here's the trick. Well, you go into your Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, it's a new program. <laughs> it, your, your Amazon account. And okay. you basically, he said, seeing if I can uh, get to a point where I can share my screen without giving away everything. Um, there's a really cool, he said, now going back to Google so I can share my screen so I can show you guys what I'm doing. Um, share my screen. That would be this one. There we go. So hopefully, yes, you guys now see, I think my Amazon account, right? New bounty program. No, you're seeing Mixler. Hold on. Let's try that. Yeah, we're again. seeing Colin studio. Yeah, that's so there you go. There's the back end of Colin studio. Hey, that looks uh, good. That looks simple. Uh, let me quit that now. Um, cause what you'll do is where is my Amazon screen? United, screen one, screen two. Oh, here we go. I was thinking that there might be some place right in the Amazon affiliates page where you have links and banners. And yeah, when you go in, that. you should be able to see my Amazon account now. And you can see I have have uh, two items ordered so far this month, which is weird because, no, two clicks. So I'm not uh, burning up the uh, yeah, we thing. Can't, there, but it's, can't see that, Dave, for whatever you, reason. It's not showing up. It's not showing on up. the video. Oh, I yeah. see that. Um, that's really weird. It's a weird morning. Things just aren't. Well, maybe you can just, just explain it. Yeah. Um, when you go into your Amazon account, um, there are there's an option at the top for links and banners, where you can yeah, either I'm, a, I'm there right now. Actually. Yeah, you can either go there and type in a product. So if I was looking for let's say uh, Star Wars episode, what what episode should we go with, Ram? Episode seven. Seven, okay. It won't be out yet. All right, well, let's not do that then. Let's go six. Uh, uh, go with six. Okay, so here um, I can see Return of the Jedi widescreen. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see where it says Get Link. And when you click on that, you then have an option for text only. And what I do sometimes if I just want the link is on the right-hand side of your screen, it'll give you a preview. And if you just right-click on that preview link and choose copy link address, that's the same as highlighting it and choosing copy. Um, then you have a, an option. Right. Then you have an option for image only, where you can see: um, Do you want a large image or a small image? And then you have a widget which puts this little, like 300 by 250 kind of, um, oh, widget for like a better phrase, a little box that will show up on your website. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, that's what we typically do, like on our, on our website on the right-hand side. I go grab that code. Right. Um, but what I'm looking for is more of a generic link uh, uh, so I could see the people at the office. And they, people at the office are ordering stuff from Amazon all the all time. All the time. And I would, love to be able, yeah, I would love to be able to say to people, hey, just go to our affiliate link. It's blah, 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 blah. And here's one link that would uh, essentially be something that they could use to get to Amazon and then shop for whatever they want. Yep. I'm not even sure if this actually exists. Well, what most of the big boys do, the Jay Moores, the, uh, I'm trying to think of other kind of somewhat celebrity people do, is they say, go to my website and click on the Amazon link. And they have just a generic banner at the top. And the reason for that, and this is one of those really gray areas in the Amazon terms of service, is if you have a link that you send people to Amazon and it, it's not disclosed that this is an Amazon link, technically you're breaking mm -hmm. your terms of service. So that's why 
even if you do something like go to mywebsite.com slash Amazon, it, it's, and that's where I tried to get them to like be specific on this. And you, I just couldn't get somebody to say, yes, that's good. Or yes, that's bad. Cause there are some pretty weird terms that aren't exactly hundred percent clear. Dave, I think a bunch of us are using that oh. right now with yeah. the slash Amazon and, and no, I haven't, you know, that's what I use. That's the average guy TV slash Amazon. I know Daniel does that too. And I think that's okay. I mean, we're all using it. We haven't been shut down. I, I think that's the term, you know, the one they didn't like was when you put it inside the URL. So if you yeah. make Amazon dot the average guy dot TV, they, that will absolutely, that's against their terms. But I think as long as it's not in the domain, that's what they're concerned about. They don't want it in that domain section. So as long as it's your domain slash Amazon, and you 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 uh, you make that link with a pretty link or whatever a URL shortener that you are using for your site. Pretty link is the easiest way I think to get it done. Yeah, um, and, and that seems to work real well. And then you can just share that your domain slash Amazon. Right. So in that case, you would go out to. There's actually a spot where you can link to any page because even it's kind of weird that they don't have a built-in affiliate link to their home page. They have a bunch of product page and banner links, but you yeah. think there'd be like one that's like, hey, use this to send people to the home page. So I've actually gone in. Actually, there's one right there, home page link 2014. It's like, they've changed that apparently. So if I click on oh, that. Oh, is that somewhere Is that somewhere right on the Amazon page itself? It's actually in the the Amazon affiliate thing, but here's the part that drives me crazy, is when you go to that, here are at least nine different images to send people to Amazon, but there's no text link. So you have to then either you can strip one out, make your own. Yeah. You strip one out of the, you know, you'll, you'll see it. And it's, it is just, it's incredibly ugly. Uh, the link to Amazon. They are ugly. You can, yeah, you are yeah. Like ugly. And you basically, you look for the end of the quotation marks. That's where, where, where it starts with HTTP, and when you see the next quotation mark, that's the end of it. Because mine says it's for a, a, a button that's eight, 180 by 150. You don't want all that stuff. You just want, in my case, and it's I, I would say it to you, but it's literally in the box. It's three lines long. <laughs> it's just the link. So that's okay. where you can take that okay. link, and um, you can uh, put that into Pretty Link and, uh, and go that route. There, and Amazon does have a link okay. checker. That you can use, you know, if you go to the banner area, there's a link checker. And if you ever have any questions about creating a link and you want to make sure you're getting credit for it, you can throw it in that link checker and it will, it'll come back and say, yes, this works or no, this doesn't. Okay. So you're saying it's best to use the, uh, the selection where it says link to any page and then create a link that way? Uh, if you want a text link, that would work. I've done that in the past. Rather than trying okay. to yeah, to that's strip, that's fairly easy. yeah. Rather than trying to strip one out of the homepage link that is then designed for a a graphic. In theory, the the okay. Link wait, I'd like to put a graphic. Oh, there's there's a uh, if you want a graphic, oh. then there's one right there. If you go when you first log in, you'll see under I think it's links and banners. Um, if I click on product links, no, nope, not product links. If I go to banner links. So under links and banners, it will say banner links. And yeah, you'll see right there, rotating banner campaigns by category. And there's an option there that says homepage link 2014. And that if you go in there, there's a ton of uh, options there. For... Oh, excellent. Okay, I'll start digging around this today. I'm sure I'll be able to find something. There you go. How's everything going with your podcast, man? Homepage. Doing really well, really well. We just passed our 50th episode mark. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're really good. We've just crossed the threshold of uh, 4,000 downloads a month. So that's a, it's a bit of a small milestone for us, but we're pretty proud of that. That's cool. And um, getting lots of guests. I, I'm really digging that, uh, you know, to date we've had probably 10, 15 different people on the, on the podcast. And uh, it, having a lot of fun. It's, it's so much fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at Podcast Movement in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that'll be – it's it's. We, I actually <laughs> – here's what I did this week. This is funny. I was teaching a PowerPoint class, and I said, we're all just going to do our own – rather than do the, the examples in the book, let's all make our own examples. Let's let's make something that's personal to us. <laughs> and then I worked on my presentation for Podcast <laughs> Movement <laughs> as the instructor. <laughs> So, uh, killing two birds with one stone there. Teacher's tricks, huh? Yeah, that was it. And 
Oh, well right. done, well done. Yeah. yeah, so we'll look forward to seeing you at uh, in Dallas. Is, is, are you going too, Jim? I am not going, no. My, my schedule just didn't allow for it. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. It's weird. Your, your audio is almost better. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, it's like, okay, you're, you're just slightly underwater now. I'm just I'm swimming to the surface. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate the help, and uh, we will talk to you later on. All right. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for calling in. There you go. My pleasure. Take care. Thanks for your help. It's just Goodbye. that easy. You pick up the phone. You dial 845-262-2401. You pop up on the screen. I click a button, and uh, your smiling voice uh, will be on there. And, of course, that was Remy from uh, Sci-Fi Movie Podcast. We forgot to have him... Uh, Dave, Daniel, Daniel wanted me to mention uh, the affiliate link ID piece that's that's buried inside your, you know, that as we talk about Amazon, you want to make sure there are some code in there. And when you when you log into Amazon, you're going to get your your username on Amazon, whatever that is, when you sign up for an affiliate relationship. Then there's going to be a minus twenty. It'll be negative twenty. However you want to say that. Right. That is technically the ID that you have. So you want to make sure that's in the link that you know each time. Although that being said. If you send someone over to your Amazon page using that link and they search for something else, that affiliate link will go away and you'll think, oh, I've lost the sale. Not true. We, have, we had one of our listeners this week um, verify that with Amazon, actually emailed into their tech support, very concerned that his, what he was buying was not getting credited to our account. And they, they assured him, nope, if you come in on that, there's a cookie embedded on the, in the, you know, there that keeps that sale associated with it, even though that link will disappear when you go to it, that affiliate will get credit for it. So don't feel like if that goes away, you're going to be missing out. I have a tip for people, and this is, this is a, a, wait a minute, I think, here we go. Oh, hey, Dave, they're, you're focused just on me, too. <laughs> That's right. It's time for a pet peeve, and I just did my own. You, you focused on me, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Wait a minute. Here we can do this one. Dave pops a cork in five, four, three, two. Yeah. Uh, uh, people that record live podcasts that forget to sign out of Facebook and through the entire podcast, you keep hearing, bet him, bet him, bet him. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, we're talking away. And all of a sudden I hear, bet him. And I'm like, oh, I forgot to sign out of Facebook. Yeah. Because there was. Yeah. Th- there's a podcast I was listening to the other day, and they had Facebook and whatever the Google notifier is for desktop that lets you know when you have mail. And I was like, again, it wasn't like I didn't unsubscribe, but I was like, you know, that's a pretty easy fix to make. And it was just kind of, it was a squirrel in the middle of your content. All of a sudden, I hear, and then, you know, and something else. And I was like, you know, that's pretty easy to shut those down. Yeah, so. they're they're also uh, on the YouTube video. They're saying I'm staying in focus. So I don't know if you've got me clicked, which means I'm always on the big screen. But no. t- t- are we flipping back and forth on that? If I talk now, we are definitely not flipping. Okay, good, good. That was that was a ways back. I just wanted to make sure that. Yeah, because uh, you weren't clicked, but we are definitely not flipping because I don't see me now. Hmm. You just see so you. So look sexy, man. Okay. Do, do a- <laughs> wow. <laughs> Podcast and sexy. It must be, uh, it's just gremlins in the machine today. It is kind of a weird morning with that. You know, you just, you just have, you know, sometimes when you're doing it, you just have things like that and you just push forward. You get it to, you get it done. Yeah. I mean, I can manually switch it to me, but I just see you at this point when I talk in theory, well, here again, what's, what's weird is there's no lights blinking on the Google plus hangout. There's something freaky going on here because normally I I have little you know, progress lights. And so I'll just manually switch it to me. And that's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, normally remember I said this morning when we, when I switched, I had to switch my audio thing. It was kind of weird. And I'm like, no, it's me because normally I kind of try to gauge my volume. Although those are completely worthless. Um, at least to know if I'm, uh, doing something. So, uh, very odd. And this would be my question. If I were to leave the Google hangout, it's all over, right? Cause I started it. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, didn't they, want to do that. So behind the scenes, Google has been releasing or has been working on, uh, I shouldn't say Google. Uh, yeah, Google has been releasing uh, the ability to not have to have the plug-in. It's built into the browser now. So, you know, if you had guests and you'd have to have them sign in and then have to add the plug-in. If they don't use Google+, Plus, they'd have to add the plug-in. And it was kind of, you had your guests had to jump some hoops. 
if you were going to use Google Plus to get this done. Well, they're trying to take that out inside the, the Chrome browser, and so there's been some new releases of Chrome that don't require the plugin. I think that's messing things up. So it may, you know, your your results may vary as you use it. I use it at work all the time. I didn't have any problems this week, but we've had some problems today. And you just never know. They're constantly upgrading the service. Again, that's why you just got to get through it, right? You just do it, you work it, you make it happen. The content's what's important. I mean, yeah, we've, we've got some audio problems and some other stuff, but at the end of the day, it's all about content. Well, and the other thing is that um, we just, rather than try to pretend it wasn't happening, yeah. we just said, hey, guess what? We're having yeah. audio problems today. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, you, you got to go full disclosure when you're a podcaster, right? Yeah. Especially when you're podcasting to podcasters, right? Because that's the thing I see when I when I do podcast consulting for folks, and they those first couple ones, Especially, I just trained a backup at work, so now I have a second producer at work to do help me do some of the podcasting stuff. And as I was training him, he would come up against problems, and he would just freak out, right? And I'd be like, hey, whoa, whoa, slow down there. Just think it through. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so when I was on vacation, he was doing it when I was on vacation, and I got two emails immediately before he got started. I can't do this. I can't do that. And then, so I just let him sit for a minute, and two minutes later, I got, oh, never mind. I figured it out. <laughs> so, you know, you just, it's like, stay calm. <laughs> Make it through. It'll be fine. Think it out. Don't freak out. You know, um, w whatever you start doing, don't just start changing settings rapidly and wildly because you're going to screw stuff up. You may not ever be able to unwind. So just think it through. And c at the worst case, cancel it and redo it when your stuff is when your stuff is better. You know, <laughs> Ryan says, "Stay calm and, and podcast. podcast." He actually has a a, a, a question. I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this. Is uh, Dave? I'm I'm working. Uh, I'm looking for a good workflow to repurpose audio content. When you bring in audio to your podcast and then pause for commentary, how am I doing that? Um, two ways. One, both have their pros and cons. Um, I use Soundbite many times on the iPad for that. And I will, now that that's the good news. Um, the bad news is the only way to get things into Soundbite, and there might be another way that I need to look into, but for the most part, you got to plug in a cable. <gasps> Oh, it's so hard. I have to plug in a cable. I have to fire up iTunes, and then I have to drag the file into the app section of iTunes. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, now, the cool thing is is with um, with Soundbite, you can go in and just hit a pause button, and then play, pause, and you basically pause and unpause. Um, so that's the good news. It's a little easier to pause and unpause. And again, we're talking like two extra clicks here. That's when I say, it's, oh, it's harder. Uh, the other way is I love Boss Jock Studio, but to pause and unpause, you have to go in. You and and the cool thing is, you can drag things into Boss Jock via Dropbox. So I just throw any files for the episode into Dropbox. I open up my Boss Jock and say I want to in, I want to assign a, a sound file to this button. It's super easy. But later, if I want to pause and unpause, I have to kind of I don't just hit the button. I have to go into the button and see like the big shot smarty pants kind of options. Cause you can go in and say, I want the clip to start at five seconds. So you can do some really cool stuff, but also that's where you have to go to pause and unpause. So it's, we, it's again, it's not a huge deal. You just have to kind of really pay attention. And yeah, so boss jock is, is easier to get files onto. It's just, you have to really kind of pay attention when you're, you're, getting ready to play a file to not just hit the button because that's your default knee-jerk reaction is um, to go in and see like these extra settings for the file so I can pause and unpause. And uh, Daniel in the uh, the chat room says, Soundboard by Ambrosia. Interesting. I think that's the one Adam Curry uses for uh, the No Agenda show, which I believe Ambrosia is a Mac program, if I remember right. Dave so. John Harns actually asked a while back too. He's got five podcasts in the can. He's releasing a, you know, he's doing a new, mm -hmm. new show. Better to release them all at once, one per day for a week, one at one a week if it's a weekly show. What what's your recommendations on that? Well, here's the thing. I think um, Ryan just did this. I have a a client of mine who unfortunately she does a daily radio show out of New York, um, the, the Debbie Nigro show, and. She, her engineer will get behind giving me the files to then potify them, for lack of a better phrase. And so all of a sudden, we'll put up like three days in a row. And what happens is the last one that goes up will get a lot of hits, and then the, the following two won't. And then so I'm not sure all at once is a good idea because you're really assuming whatever it is, the last one you upload better be the killer one because that's what's going to 
um, motivate people to want to hear episode two and three and four and five. And the other thing you have to be, I don't know if it's cautious about, but something to think about if, let's see, if you listen to the first episode and you don't listen to the next, there's that whole weird thing in iTunes where if you don't listen to stuff, it stops downloading your latest content. After a while, I think. Yeah. It, yeah. After a couple of weeks or three weeks or a month or something. So I, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm going to do a bunch, I would do daily. That way, at least when people, you know, when it checks your feed, there'll be something to download where unless they have it set to download all or download two, you know, if you upload five and it only downloads the last two, then you're just missing the last three unless they go to the feed. And, and I'm thinking in podcast app, the, uh, the Apple thing. Your thoughts on that, Jim? Yeah, I think if it's a weekly show and you've got five in the can, I think you start with one and you've got, now you've got, and if, if it's evergreen content, now you're, man, you are set for a disaster. And so if you get behind a week, hey, not a big deal. You've got five in the can. And so you can kind of click that down one and click it down one. That's, I, I, for me, that would be an ideal weekly podcaster situation is to release one, wait a week, and then you've always got three or four built up. It gives you tons of options. It's just like cash. You know, in life, the more cash you have, the more options you have. When podcasting, the more podcast you have in the can the more options you have with your feed and if you want to if you need to speed one up or move them around or an event happens that where one you've got in the can would really fit well you can move those around and you're not beholden to the weekly schedule so if if, if that's weekly if you're thinking daily five is not near enough to have in the can so you you know you'll have to work on that but i think he's thinking weekly here i would uh, i just start one a week and and get them going and Ryan says, for those four shows that he uploaded all at once, the stats now have even themselves out. And, yeah, I uh, think they do eventually. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and Daniel's saying the, uh, the last five episodes, um, if you don't listen to them, if you don't play them, iTunes and the podcasts app will uh, pause the subscription. So, but in theory, if you're, if you're new, if you find the show, you're going to listen to at least one of those if you uploaded five. So... Um, oh, da Daniel's on the line. He's on the line. That is him on the line. There you go. Speak of the devil from the, uh, pa uh from the audacity to podcast and, uh, noodle.mx, uh, Daniel J. Lewis. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Hey, Dave and Jim. How's it going? Good, man. Good Saturday morning yeah, to I, you. I wanted to know from you guys what you think of the possibility and well, it really looks like it's confirmed now, but of Apple buying swell and what that me might mean for podcasters. I wanted to get your opinion on that too. Well, the interesting thing is they bought it and closed it down from what I read. And I was like, well, that's kind of uh stinky unless they're then going, I don't know what to think of it. I, I thought about that. I'm glad you asked that. Cause I'm like, well, on one hand, cool. That means they're Either A, because I don't, was Swell making that much of a dent in the podcast uh, world? Cause, no. Yeah, because I'm like going, it's not like they bought them because they were competition. I think that, so I'm assuming they bought them for their technology, you know, their discoverability kind of engine. So I'm kind of excited about that. I hope they take that and put it into the, um, the podcast app. And uh, Jim, what are your thoughts? Typically, that never goes well when companies buy other companies for their technology. Um, it's so hard. The integration pieces are so hard. I mean, some work. Some make it work, and, and it goes well. But for a lot of the bigger companies like Apple or Microsoft or Google, as they've acquired these, it takes them a year or two or three for them to really integrate. I mean, you, you, you have some successes like Waze. When, when Google bought Waze and integrated it, it's still not fully integrated into Maps. and I mean, it's just... I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, I I, I hope to see it resurface because I was I used Swell for I don't know a week and played with it and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And I submitted my podcast to to Swell. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, buddy? Well, I was thinking the same thing too that they're going to merge the technology in, but um, I, I was thinking maybe it will even apply to more than just the podcast app because. Apple's whole recommendation engine is pretty horrible. It's basically just people who buy this also bought this, or people who listen to this also bought that, which can be horrible. Like if my clean comedy podcast 
is recommended right next to Mark Marin's podcast yeah. with uh, very distinct <laughs> initials. <laughs> so I, I'm hoping they incorporate the better recommendations. But since you actually used Swell, did you like the recommendation engine? Did you use it to find new shows? Actually, I my my initial reaction to Swell was meh. It was like, all right, it wasn't like, wow, this is cool and it's easy. It was just kind of like, and at the time, I think I was still playing with Stitcher. So I didn't really feel like like finding all my shows and, and really using it exclusively. And so it didn't like really knock my socks off when I played with it. I was kind of like, all right, I see what it does. And at the time, I mean, this was like when it first came out. So I don't know if there, there were a ton of podcasts in there. I kind of did a couple quick searches and it was like, okay, so... I for me, I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't blown away by the technology, but uh, I'm, I can't really remember if, I think I, I, it suggested some things and I thought, I listened to it and I'm like, yeah, that wasn't, a, it wasn't like I was like, oh, thanks for suggesting that. It was like, yeah, okay. So. Hey, Daniel, let me ask you a question. Do you think, what do you think the percentages, and there's no stats on this, so this is your opinion, but what do you think the percentages of people who really search for and find podcasts in a search app like that, and then it sticks? Do you think that's high or low versus like word, word of mouth or recommendations? I think it's much more word of mouth. The recommendations, what someone hears recommended from a podcast or from a friend. And others have said this too, like Rob Walsh keeps hitting on this, that discoverability is not a problem for the consumer. It's accessibility, making it easy for them to use. And that's why an app like Swell still has that big barrier to entry that people have to know to look for that app and install it before they even get to their podcast. So I, I don't know really what people out there are completely doing, but from what I see, most people uh, know the podcast that they're looking for unless they're just getting into it and curious. Yeah, I just we spend so much thought, effort, and time on new and noteworthy. And those kinds of and getting you know searches and being in all the directories and all that stuff, and I really wonder what the ROI is on that for the amount of time we spend doing it versus encouraging our listeners to share, you know, share the podcast with somebody else. So I, we I do some podcast consulting for a, a group, and they in their in their uh, in the very first part of their podcast say ideas are worth sharing. If if you've liked this or or you know if you've liked this, please share it. Just that suggestion to do word of mouth as opposed to trying to be on every single search engine, you know, known to man. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, and topical, um, topical content will always show up better to search engines. So, like, if, for example, I have a podcast about the TV show Once Upon a Time. So when someone searches iTunes for Once Upon a Time, maybe they're familiar with TV show fan podcasts or they're just searching for the TV show they'll also find my podcast because it is extremely topical. It's focused on that niche. But some of the more general stuff out there, it'll be harder for people, I think, to be discovered in that way. Well, and you bring up a different point, topical search versus uh, recommendations coming out of, you know, something like Swell. Those are two totally different ideas. And so if you're working on a topical, you have a great chance with SEO to be picked up. I think these these recommendation engines, even on Stitcher, they're just not very good, and I just I don't know if I try and game them or, or spend much time thinking about it. I, I think the only thing that it did for me on Stitcher was I didn't realize there's a comedian named Artie Lang who used to be on the Howard Stern show until he tried to kill himself, basically. Um, and I thought he'd just fallen off the planet. I knew he was back in rehab and was getting his life back together. He was going back and he was doing comedy, but I had no idea he had a podcast. And I happened to be on Stitcher, and it was like the Artie Lang show, and I'm like, I didn't know he had a podcast, so... That was one, but then again, it was, you know, here's somebody who's already famous, so I already knew what it was, but if that, if that had said, you know, whatever, the the marketing and margarita show, I'd, I'd be like, well, okay, but I knew that name, so that's probably why I clicked on that more than uh, that, but it did actually discover something for me, but uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Well, I was just curious on your thoughts there. Thanks, Thanks Sam. Thanks for calling in, Daniel. Thanks, man. And again, you could find him over at the Audacity to Podcast. That was an interesting... Uh, That's a little trumpet. Hey, yeah. Randy Cantrell's out there, and, and Randy asked this question. He said, do you find that Google Hangouts messes with your audio? Uh, I just He just dropped below the fold there. Do you, f do you guys find that Google Hangouts behave wonky with okay. your audio interface? 
they yes. they, <laughs> they did today um, when we first, and it's still doing wonky stuff today um, because that's why I have to manually keep switching this back and forth. So there's Jim, there's Dave. Oh, yeah, there's that's, and that's, that's just the video. That's not even the audio. Yeah. No, is, in, in voice mode, they will absolutely take control of your audio interface and adjust the volume how they see fit. So you don't you, you lose control of your volume. You know, it's trying to do it for the for the average person who may not have great equipment and so move it around. If you put it in studio mode mode, it will lock that in. So that's we're both in studio mode right now and that that seemed to help. Yeah. And um what ended up fixing the problem this morning cuz Jim could not hear a thing coming from me and I'm like it's I didn't really change anything. And all I did is I go through a Griffin iMic and I unplugged it and plugged it back in. And then I switched because that is set to my default audio input and output. And so I went into my Google Hangout and said, hey, use the default, which is weird because it was pointing at the iMic. Like I said specifically, use the iMic. And I switched from that to say, use my default, which, of course, points at the iMic, and that worked. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things. People always ask me, Dave, you're a computer instructor. Don't you get tired teaching you know, Excel 1? And I'm like, no, because I deal with computers, and it's never the same class. There's always something going on. Um, well, with so, everything changing all the time, too, there's always yeah. new updates and, and things to troubleshoot. So it it's, uh, never gets old. Yeah. It gets frustrating, but it never gets old. Yeah, and, and that's where, you know, today we just said, well, we'll deal with it. And we hit record and it started going, and we, we saw where there were people in the chat room. And we're like, ah, it's, I can understand what you're saying. You sound like you're underwater a little bit. But Well, uh, today would have been a good day for a double-ender. And, and I, <laughs> I, started, um, I started to fire that up and realized they did not have Audacity configured correctly for this PC to be able to pull in just my audio on it but that would have been a good uh, that would have been a good call as to do a double ender that I record on my side and so then you I could have sent you that file at the end of the podcast right. to say okay Dave merge this in and uh, you you could have brought well that would have been a challenge for you cuz you're probably not recording just your side right you're recording the whole I'm thing. recording everybody yeah, yeah yeah so that that may not have worked either but that's a good emergency you know if you're if you're in a mm -hmm. situation where you get enough, uh, maybe you're in Google Plus and the, and the bandwidth's not good enough to get really good video. So crank, bring that video quality down to almost nothing and, and get good audio and then record a double ender. And at least that will give you good audio quality. That, that is one thing we haven't tested. I'm already down one notch. I'm going to go down to low. I now have low. Well, it's not going to let me do that in the uh, middle of a hangout. You totally blacked you out when you did that. Yeah, it's like, no, not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so... You know, yeah. for this for this podcast, uh, Skype. When we, when we think about the way we do this, because we don't bring guests in via video, so this might be one of those things where where although Skype doesn't have a great way of recording live like we're doing on on, uh, on Google Plus. Although I've done that before with a bunch of trickery, you can't you can get it done. But you know, the video side by side. In other words, where we're not you and I are not flipping all the time, but right. where our two where our two screens would be side by side, that wouldn't be a bad option. Then you wouldn't have to manually click. That's interesting. John Parker says the audio is only bad on Mixler. So on the Hangout, your audio is fine. Hmm. Hmm. As everyone together, hmm, what does this mean? Hmm. Yeah, so. It's but, just quiet it, on Mixler. Or it could just, it could depend on how you're feeding it in. And I mean, you've got a jumble of wires to make this work. So it's. Yeah. it's well, the, the other thing to keep in mind, when in doubt, reboot. And, um. I should just do that every Saturday morning when I get in. It just, I don't know about you, it takes me forever to reboot by all the time. Yeah. You no, know, then... I've gotten my reboots down. You solid state on everything. So ah. uh, that that is, you know, right now, solid state hard drive, Go, going back to the storage discussion, mm -hmm. solid state hard drives are just ridiculously cheap. You're paying 50 cents a gig, I think, about at this point. So 120 gig SSD is, a, is about what you need for your OS uh, anymore. That's about the minimum I would go with if you're using a Windows device a lot of the mac newer mac devices already have ssd so you're already you're already set but that will change an ssd will change your boot from 30 to 35 to 40 seconds on windows to about 10 seconds and wow. also increase your performance yeah that's the best way to revive an old if you've got if you're a podcaster and you got some old equipment the best way to revive it is just put a solid state drive in it oftentimes you'll see a five to ten times uh, increase in performance just by a hundred uh, you know by a 60 or 70 or 80 dollar ssd upgrade 
Um, and, and so it's not terribly expensive. You'll get great performance, and, and uh, you'll extend the life oftentimes of a laptop or even a desktop. You can extend the life just by putting an SSD drive in there. We have a question from uh, Randy again. It says, is there, is there some reason why we don't use the Q&A in a Hangout? Mm. I, have, I think I tried it once on something, and it, it, I just know our problem is we started out originally on Spreaker, which we still are. Um, all we use that for is the iHeartRadio option. We, we, we liked Mixler, which is who we're streaming the, the audio through. We liked their chat window better than Spreaker. And then Dave got in his head, hey, let's try video and let's add a call in. And the fun thing is every time you add something new, it adds um, a, a new level of complexity to it. And Jim, have you ever used the Q&A part of, uh, of a Hangout? Yeah, when they first came out, we tried them. Um, I prefer a chat room for my questions, and I prefer not to have to look at three or four different places to get questions. That's the just I'm trying to you know consolidate them down. We have a chat room on our uh, we use Chatwing for our chat service, and so I try to drive everybody to that. And what I found is when I had Q and A on, I just quit looking at it, and then of course that makes people mad when you when you don't answer their you know they put the question in Q and A and you don't answer it. That's, I guess that's my question. What, where does it show up? Does it show up in the video? No, it shows up in the Hangouts here for us. I haven't used the newest version in a while, so I'm not sure. So you get a little Q&A section on, on the right-hand side of the video window that we're looking at. There would be a and a there. But, I, again, I'd minimize it or whatever, and I'd, I would, it just it did not work. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It just didn't work in my workflow very well. Yeah. So yeah, I but, didn't. I didn't use it. It's a great tool. If you're a podcaster, you should try it. You should test it. It might be something that fits you very well, and your audience might like to use it. It is a great way, especially if you have a lot of viewers coming in off of YouTube or Google Plus who are not on your page. It's a great way to get questions in. So, you know, it's very obvious to them when they're watching that Q and A is turned on, and so they could. That Dave, that might have been. We had a, a guy come in earlier, uh, Zid. And yeah. he was asking a question. First, he asked it on our Google Plus page. Then he came over and joined the group. And then when we gave him the phone number, he's like, well, I'm, I'm in Iraq and I can't call in. And you could have just left that in the in the chat. So, yeah. you, you know, there's several ways to do that. But there are different places to, to for folks. I always say try and make it as easy as for your listener as possible. So know your audience. If you, if you find a way that works, stick to it. If you've got to su support multiple ways, uh, support them. But it all depends on where your audience is. Yeah, and Daniel says uh, you have to basically follow a specific Google workflow if you're using Q&A. And uh, uh, Randy's saying he's new to the live version. I say, hey, for the record, there's no rule that says you have to uh, to do live. It does add uh, more, you know, it, more bells and whistles to play with. Um, you know, if you could see what goes on when I start the show, that's why now there's like pre-show because I used to try to hit record, 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 start, uh, start the hangout hit play, adjust the volume, and we're like, no, forget it. So now if you if you get here about 1025, you usually hear us chatting beforehand, and then we just start the show at 1030 because it was just ridiculous. And I would always forget something, and it was like, you know what, this is, I don't have, uh, I'm not part octopus. And yeah, so yeah, I just no. I just go back and fix it later. So we, we do the same thing on our live shows. I actually start about 15 minutes early and allow for some open chat between the chat room and us mm -hmm. to kind of get, get them all lubed up and warmed up and, you know, get that going. That's why TV shows have, you know, that's why talk shows and or um, um, late night shows have a warm up comedian, right? Sure. Get the audience kind of warmed up. We do the same thing, and uh, it's just you don't you don't have to if you're going to edit post production, you don't have to be perfect uh, right. to start with. So you got some time. Hey, there were some questions in chat real quick about the SSD comment that I made. There there were a lot of folks saying uh, the quality, you know, the the older SSDs, especially a couple years ago, had some very limited write capabilities. And uh, with the advent of cheaper SSDs and more of them getting into the system and Apple using them standard, there's been a lot of pressure on those industries to make them better. And so the technology has gotten better. I won't nerd you out with all the, you know, with all the things that are there. Let me just say, like with any technology, uh, it's, it's gotten better. And so um, SSDs for most people will last as long or longer than a spinning hard drive. I mean, we all know the quality of spinning hard drives these days isn't that great either. And so you should expect a two to three year life out of any hard drive that you buy, you should always, going all the way back to the beginning, you should always make sure everything is backed up anyways. I've had hard drives fail that are days old. I've had hard drives never fail that are years old. I think I've got some drives in my Drobo right now that are maybe six years old, seven years old. They just keep spinning. 
And so um, you, you, you don't know, so you got to get that stuff backed up. But absolutely right now, if you, if you haven't tried an SSD, right now is the time to jump in. Prices are great, very cost-effective, um, and, and a great way to increase your performance. There you go. Hey, we've uh, got a little bit of time left. If you are got a question, as always, the number is 845-262-2401. And uh, we have open phone lines at the moment, and I'll do my my uh, traditional plug since you're listening. If you'd like to join the School of Podcasting, use the coupon code S20 to save 20 bucks off your first month. But uh, we've got... we. We've got a little bit of time left. But, hey, let, uh, let me say one more thing on SSDs, Dave. Sorry, sure. just, just to, not to dominate there. But with, with SSD drives, writing is, what's, it is what, what, what ends their life so much. The reading is okay. Reading is great. Writing is what's hard on them. So if you set up your SSD as your OS, there's not a lot of writing that goes on for an, for an OS drive. I mean, it's just basically reading those files and doing some stuff. And then you pair that with a spinning drive. Um, for your data, so the data goes on your spinning drive. The OS stays on the OS. That's that is the that is the uh, the optimal situation when you're talking about a computer uh, and, and what it's doing. Because your spinning drives are great at writing and reading both, and OS or SSD drives are great at really are fast at reading, and they're fast at writing too. But it, it does shorten their life some. So that dual combo on a PC, SS for SSD for OS, spinning drive for your data is a great, and a lot of the guys that I hang, a lot of the tech guys I hang out with, that's kind of the configuration they use. So that's, somebody talked about limited life cycles out there. It, those, that, that primarily is with the writing. So you just want to limit the amount of writing that you do to that drive. So I, I got a little nerdy. Sorry about that. That's all right. We did have another question about affiliate stuff in Amazon um, in the chat room. It says, did I say at one time you should not use Pretty Link? No, use Pretty Link. Um, don't use, be careful. There's a setting in pretty link that lets you use an iframe and that will flat out put you in the out of bounds mode. As um, I'm, yeah, I'm, as I found out the hard way. Yeah. And I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to dig through their terms of service. And I just remember them being very gray on, on whether a slash Amazon is okay. I know there are a lot of people doing that. Um, and then Ken Blanchard, the one, the only black man with a gun, uh, my brother from another mother said, can a hangout be saved? It is if it's on air. But I, the only way I think you could save a Google Hangout would be if you're using something like ScreenFlow or Camtasia to record it while you're actually doing you, it. Ustream would do that as well. You can, if you have a Ustream account, you could, you could screen capture that, and Ustream would do both audio and video. So that, that's old school. Uh, we don't talk about Ustream very much. They changed their pricing terms, and it got ugly over there. It's super expensive, and they have mid-roll ads and all kinds of crazy stuff. But that is, well... As of a year or two ago, there was still a way to do it with Ustream. There you go. More tools and fun stuff. Uh, speaking of tools, there is a... Uh, I forgot to put this in our, our notes. Uh, in fact, I'm making it up as we speak. There's a new service coming out called LiveAudioCast.co. And I'm not sure where they're based out of. But I was talking with the guy, his name is Lucas, and I, I said, here's what I'm looking for in a, a, a media host. I said, number one, don't mess with my file. He says, we're not really a podcast media hosting company. What they're trying to do is kind of like a Spreaker, give you an online tool so that you don't need a mixer, you don't need Audacity, you don't need a garage band. They'll actually, the, their software is going to do the rest. It says if you... If you don't need to worry about ID3 tags or any of the technical pieces. We're going to do that for you. So I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, cool. Here's, again, I, I said one of the things that's going to happen this year is we're going to have more and more services. It says our recording is done in WAVE and then encoded to MP3. We use 44.1.128 stereo. And I was like, mm, okay. Um, what else do they have here? Uh, for people that want more control over their technical aspects of podcasting, um, we are targeting people that want to remove the pain of the podcasting process, all the FTPing, the hosting, the website posting, XML. There are services right now that are charging over $2,000 a month for this. I'm like, who do, who's charging 2000 a month? But um, he says they do have unlimited bandwidth and hosting for all their accounts. Um, he says we create a feed. So if you need an RSS feed, he says, but you can simply add your current existing feed in a program like FeedBurner. And I'm like, ugh. Or you can use the new feed as your new feed. Um, it says it's pretty much however you drive the service. So really, it's it's kind of a, a tool that's going to be online that's going to 
they're going to try again to to take the pain out of it. Um, says we do have some stats in our dashboard because I said that's the other thing I want. He says, but uh, most of the analytics we leave to the big boys. Um, Google Analytics and iTunes have this stuff figured out. We help our our users if they need these to use up. And I said basically also I want it to not be free, which people always like what because I want it to be around. So it's just another hosting service that's kind of coming out, and they're going to try to be more than a host. They're going to be a place, like I said, to me it sounds like Spreaker without the live streaming. It's a place where you can record uh, wherever you're at. So I was just like, well, here we go. Here's another tool coming into the space. I have I've yet to play with it. I just uh, that, that conversation started about two days ago, so I haven't had a chance to uh, – to play with it, but at least it sounds like they're trying to meet most of my uh, opinion when it comes to the things you look for in a media host. Um, stats, I think, are a big, and I um, I forget the other company that just came out, and their stats are, they, they tell you how many downloads your podcast got, but they don't tell you which episode. And I'm like, now, come on, you got, I want to know which one's the most popular. Yeah, now Mediafire, as we talked about earlier, they'd be immediately wiped out by your criteria because they don't do any stats for you, right? That's right? That's that a right? stat, yeah. But it's like you said, I could go through Blueberry and get their stats. Yeah, you could, you know, basically they just, they, they're they a, uh, you know, they would be a hosting. Uh, it, it would work like any of those other services. They give you a .mp3 location and a .mp4 that you can put into your blog post, and it'll act just like any of the other ones as well. Yeah. And technically, they would get thrown out because they don't have unlimited bandwidth. Now, granted, they have 10 terabytes, which might as well be unlimited, but... Yeah, 10 terabytes, even with video, will get you a lot. I'm, I'm yeah. going to... I'm moving... Uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to move my video... Actually, I don't, I don't offer video RSS at all. It's only YouTube at this point. And some of my listeners have been asking for video RSS, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out on them and, and see how that goes. They kind of challenge me. They're like, bring it on. Let's, let's do it. And so bring it! Bring it. <laughs> well, the interesting thing for them was not he is in the interview when I was talking to him about him as we kind of wrap it up here is I was talking yeah. to him. It, it, it was just it was this idea. He was like, Jim, we're so we're so file uh, file system focused, which 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 means I have this dot MP3 right file. He goes, what if the end user doesn't care what that is? What if they just want to get and listen no matter where they're at? Right. And so we're not downloading anything to anywhere. We're making it available to them no matter what their situation is. And so he, they're moving away. They're trying to get away from that. Here's a list of files. And they're trying to get to here's a list of content. And, uh, and so they're moving that direction. And that's different for these, these storage options, right? All these storage providers are all very file system centric. They're all very, what, what are you doing with your file? And so they're trying to really get back to this media idea, and it's just media centric. How do I either watch it or, or listen to it or view it? I love the fact that we get a ton of questions at like two till. I know. <laughs> like, it's the lightning round. You need a uh, lightning round. Uh, that's it. Five minutes till. Here's the lightning round. Well, well, Daniel again from the Audacity to Podcast. Yes, you. What? Tell him what he's won. It's a it's a cheese straightener. Yes, it is. Audiometric.io is the company I was talking about that gives you. You can you can. Uh, this is the company that will pay you. We will pay you to host your files with us because uh, they want to sell advertising against your content. And uh, yeah, Audiometric.io. And when I go in to look at my stats, because I just again I test everything. Um, it just says, hey, the um, more podcast money. Uh, podcast got nine downloads. I'm like, well, which episode? Oh, that you have to figure that out on your own, I guess. Um, and then, um, yeah, Ray Ortega uh, from PodcastersStudio.com, and also the Podcasters Roundtable, which I believe we're having a Podcasters Roundtable Monday at um, Daniel 7:30 Eastern Standard Time. I believe is when that's going to kick off. Uh, so check your uh, go over to PodcastersRoundtable.com and sign up to be notified. And, uh, but yeah, um, what is that? Libri, Lib, Lib, Library Rock Records asked my thoughts about Auphonic. I love Auphonic. I bought the desktop app. Uh, that's how much I love it. It's uh, a great way to remove noise, level out stuff. The only thing the desktop version doesn't do, A, it doesn't charge you a monthly fee, and B, it doesn't do the automatic uploads to Libsyn and Dropbox and all the other stuff. Um, but I love it. I, 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 pretty much every episode of Ask the Podcast Coach uh, has gone through 
off on it because I have callers, I have myself and Jim, and I do my best to get our audio somewhat in the uh, ballpark. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, seven thirty is uh, podcasters roundtable. So Alphonic, I think is a great tool. I like it a little better than Levelator. Now Levelator is free. Uh, Levelator is no longer being developed. It's kind of uh, what what you get is what you get. But uh, Jim, have you played with Alphonic? I have not. No. Nope. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It 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 goes through and removes noise. You can do a whole bunch of stuff to it. And then if you use the online version, it's really cool. You can actually, if you wanted to, you could, um, much like the other one we're talking about, the live cast, whatever it was, you can upload your intro and outro, record your meat and potatoes on your phone if you wanted to, upload it, and it will stitch the file together, add your album art and your ID3 tag. So that's another one that that live, uh, whatever it was, um, I'd have to go back and look at my email. Um, where to go? Live audio cast.co. That's another one that is kind of like an alphonic without the noise reduction, where it'll stitch the whole thing together. I'm looking for somebody to come up with a system that allows me to stitch in advertising of my own. Mm-hmm. We had it at one point and it went away because it was kind of before its time, but uh, that may be something that that would be a system I would love to see in the future. I wish Lipson would, would, uh, find a solution for the average podcaster because they have that tool. It's just made for like the ESPNs of the world and, and things of that nature. So, um, but, um, uh, awesome. I think that did, uh, I think it's good. All right, cool. So I want to thank everybody for, uh, showing up as always. This was an interesting episode. I can't wait to troubleshoot what the heck's going on, but, uh, it is what it is. And, uh, it's good to be with you on a Saturday morning, dude. It is. It's always fun to hang out. Really full chat room today. Did you notice that? Was that yeah. a little fuller than usual? Yeah, no, a little fuller and some new folks. So good to, yeah. good to see. I mean, Daniel, I think this is the first time we've seen Daniel out on a Saturday morning. So Daniel, Randy Cantrell came out this morning to be a part of it. And I, you start naming people, and I, I know I'm going to miss people. So I That's apologize it. for it. But those are the folks that I know coming in. And so we appreciate you coming out on a Saturday morning and being a part of the program. And um, Jim, you can always find you at? TheAverageGuy.tv. And you can find me over at schoolofpodcasting.com, where Monday I'll be playing an interview with Ben Kruger, better known as the podcast marketing guy. And um, in Pottertainment Magazine, I might make an episode out of this. I'm going to compare podcasting to golf. Because in reality, in golf, you're really just battling yourself. And in some ways, that's how it is with podcasting. You're, you're battling your last episode. Yeah. So maybe sure. we'll talk about that in the... Uh, in the future. But thanks to everybody for uh, tuning in. We'll see you again real soon with another episode of Ask the Podcast Coach. And we'll say, let's see, now I got, how do I say bye to people? I got to switch. This is the after show. Yeah. Hey, I did find, uh, so I'm in the uh, the ever so exciting Amazon of, Amazon affiliate uh, ah, um, good agreement user agreement yes which uh i i almost fell asleep right here on the show as i was trying to read <laughs> it but in uh it's hard to find first of all yeah because there's a terms find. of service and goodbye to our friends on oh you know what <laughs> did, you, did you drop mixler i never i never started spreaker Oh, I started Mixler, but I never, uh, which is good because that's the one I always forget to go back later and change. So now we're still on Mixler. It's actually a lot easier to upload to Spreaker than it is to Mixler. Yeah, you can't really. No, you have to play it in. I I can play it in and make it. Oh, that's true. Um, You got to play it in real time. It's kind of, it's like Block Talk Radio from that standpoint. So, uh, but but here's a sentence. I think this is a sentence we all hang on. It says, in addition, in this, in addition to is meaning they're talking about the tag. So your username dot 20. I wonder how they came up with that. Slash 20? 20, yeah. Right? What is that? Anyways. In addition, you must not use a link shortening service. And you think, oh, here we go. But it's not as bad as it sounds. In addition, you must not use a link shortening service in a manner We're sorry, that makes but it. But the show has ended. Sorry about that. To record a message for Ask the Podcast <laughs> Coach, <laughs> press 1. Blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, blah, 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 hang blah. up. Yes. So Otherwise, that's the answer, up. Dave, right there. <laughs> no, All right. So say that again. What was it again? Yeah, no, that's it. That's the answer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you must not use a link shortening service in a manner that makes it unclear that you are linking to Amazon sites. So I think 
by the fact that we're saying it's Amazon, it's very, very clear we are linking to back to Amazon. So if you'd use the average guy TV slash, um, um, Oh, I was going to say something I probably shouldn't have said, but something that would be a deception, right? That might attract people to come right. in. That's that's really anyways. Right. Then that is that's a no-no, but as long as it's very clear what Amazon's trying to prevent is people from spoofing other people to come in and buy stuff. Right. And so if you've been very very clear and then somewhere else and I was trying to find that exact they have yeah. an agreement that's based in sections, and it's like Section 2A. It does say you can't use subdomains. I'll see if I can find that here, but that's, yeah. that's one of the because that's, that's the whole thing is if you do a slash Amazon, technically that's still the URL. Well, right? but it's not the subdomain, and that this is the, right. where the clarification is made. When you do a slash, you're now outside of the domain, and so you're satisfying both requirements. One is you're making it clear it's on Amazon, and two, you're not in the subdomain. That's right. why Amazon dot the average guy dot TV doesn't work, and the average guy dot TV slash Amazon does. Yeah, maybe I'll put that back. I mean, what are they going to do? Kick me out again? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well. And so Ryan Parker's saying you can't use Amazon dot dot com. That we know because that's part of the that's part of the domain. You can't yeah. have Amazon anywhere in the domain. But the domain ends at your dot com or dot TV or dot org or whatever. That's the domain section. Everything after that is fair game, and so. Just make sure it's very clear. And I don't know how you can make it any more clear. This is where Daniel taught me. You can make it any more clear than slash Amazon. And yeah. That, that, that just works out real well. I'll have to see. The other thing that I have run into, and it's somewhat annoying, is when you use pretty links and you've already got a category or something else for it, and it says I can't make that pretty link because it already exists, and then you go through and you search and you search and you search, and it's not. I actually dug into the table the one time. Like, I went into the back end of the SQL server, the SQL database, and could not find where the conflict was. Now, I did find the conflict once by doing that and deleted it and let me make it, but it is a little goofy at times. I'm like, wait a minute, let me, uh, you know, I'll be glad to kill the category or the tag. That's another one you have to look for. But um, I hate when you get a conflict with Pretty Link. I wish there was a way to say overwrite it or something. Yeah, or you could go back in and remove it you know, or change the one it's conflicting with. You can go search on that in there, change it, and then, yeah. and then re-grab it again. That sometimes happens. I've had, like, photos. I, I've, we'll use Amazon as an example. I might have uploaded a fo photo, a uh, picture, whatever, and it got a, a link of slash Amazon. And then you go to go grab that pretty link, and it's like, ah, it's already taken. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes that's a bad example with the name, but it's a good example with what happens. You might, um, like, I uploaded a picture of a Drobo, and so it, it got blah, 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 slash Drobo. And then I go to grab to make an affiliate link with slash Drobo and I get, you know, it's like, it's already taken. Ah, you know, it's pretty easy to go back in and search and find that and, uh, and, and get that done. Yeah. Don't mess with the video options day. There. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Look, I'm in the middle of a, we, we had a, uh, an atom bomb go off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And this one, I'm like a Elizabeth Taylor commercial. There's Welcome some... to buy my fragrance, white diamonds. <laughs> There's some interesting discussion going on in the chat. You know, if you take your like, I always go into my affiliate link when I'm gonna when I'm gonna post something on Twitter. I will go into Amazon. My, you know, I'll have mm -hmm. associates turned on, and I always grab the Twitter link. That's the longest. It's got a lot of stuff in there. And if I drop that into Buffer, like Buffer will auto shorten it for me, and it won't be. A, it's not a shortener. That's obvious. It's at Amazon, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. kind of a gray area. Is that? Right. It's it's you're, you're no you're now using a shortener that doesn't make it obvious that it's on Amazon. Now on Buffer you can keep the the link large, but then it's a gigantic right. A gigantic There's your 144 link. characters. Yeah, it is an absolutely gigantic <laughs> link on there. Um, so that's interesting. I hadn't thought about it in that way. When you pop it on Twitter, um, I'm thinking if I go to the if I go to Amazon right now. Do you have a few minutes, Dave? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. And I and I'm gonna share an item. Let me grab. I'm in this case. I'm gonna share an Amazon Fire Phone. That seems just because that's just what's on the front page. And I say, hey, I want to share this. So I'm gonna click the share button on Twitter. And it does give me the long link, and it does tag it with my AverageGuy.TV thing. And then if I drop it, what if I tweet that? Because Twitter will automatically shorten it. So they got to be okay with that, right? Because it's going to go to Twitter and get the t.co link shortener. 
Right. That's using their native service. So, you know, I'm assuming if they're okay with it going out on Twitter that way, they wouldn't, if they weren't okay with it, they wouldn't have enabled that to work from Twitter. So maybe they overlook these quick URL shorteners, you know, these automatic ones like, T, you know, like Bitly and Google URL shortener and, and uh, Buffer and some of those kinds to, um, because Buffer will definitely drop that into a very short URL for me. The other thing I do, though, when I, when I am tweeting out of Amazon that way, is I leave the via.amazon on there. Maybe this is the way they get around it or, or they're okay with it. It'll say the link via uh, at Amazon. And so it, I'm not tricking anybody. This is a you're going to Amazon to get this. You know, so maybe that uh, maybe that plays into it. Cool. I maybe see you Daniel. Should, maybe you Daniel should interview an Amazon legal guy. I tried. I tried. Uh, yeah. I said uh, when I called up there, and, and their their first level support is awesome. And I'm like, you know, ask this question, and, and like they told me, like they said you can't use Amazon links in an email. And I'm like, what? Well, I'm like, I didn't see that anywhere. But they um, provide an email link uh, yeah. generator in their service. Yeah, so. that's what I was like. I, yeah. It's. Um, and I said, would you guys be willing to come on the show? And they're like, oh, we can't. I'm like, what about a manager or a boss? And they're like, yeah, I don't. I'm like, really? Because I said, you know, look, I've made these mistakes. I would like to help other people avoid them. And we could avoid them if we could get some, like, crystal clear yes, no. And they're like, yeah, we're not. That, that's not going to happen. And I'm like, okay, well, thank you for your support. So what are you going to do? Yeah, Mike Phillips is saying you can turn off leak shortening in TweetDeck. You can turn off leak shortening in anything. Yeah, but I'm just saying if their native functionality is okay with it. In other words, if I go to Amazon.com, find a product, click on the Twitter, and it, it'll it'll open up the Twitter share box for me in any of those browsers. As soon as I send that to Twitter, I guess then I'd have to go into Twitter and turn off link shortening for everything. I can't imagine they're gonna make me do that, right? They want to sell product, and so. Um, I just can't imagine, and I've been doing a lot of that, and nobody said anything. That doesn't mean it's right, oh, man. We're, we're we are uh, we are sketching some, or we are skirting some interesting. Yeah, did you turn I'm, off my camera, man? I, yeah, I'm still playing. I'm like, no, I don't know what the bandwidth issue was. I'm like, it's not me. It's not you. Did my audio get better? No. That's so I was like, all right, it's not the camera. I don't know what it is, but I will definitely be uh, rebooting and testing when we get done here. It's goofy. Daniel says there's a hack to force pretty link light I saw that. pro to make those links. Yeah, yeah but you really want them. <laughs> this is hurting me. This it shouldn't be this hard, you right. know. It shouldn't be this hard if Amazon's going to live in that ecosystem. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say I don't know. Shoot. Daniel has a great video on a plugin that makes bundles. And Jim, you might want to check this out. If you're recommending, you know, buy this motherboard, buy this, oh, yeah, buy that, yeah, buy yeah. that. It's a it's bundle master, meister, meister bundle, fresh bundle, something. <laughs> um I'm sure he'll he'll throw the the link. If you just go to the audacity to podcast.com, it's it's one of the last uh episodes. And man, I saw that and I was like, oh that is way cool. Uh, especially for like a podcaster saying here, if you're a solo podcaster, click here. Cause what happens is they click one button and all that gets added to their cart. Yeah. That's a good idea. And I was like, Hmm, that's a, that's a WordPress plugin. Yeah. It's uh, it's fresh Meister bundle. Maybe Daniel would be kind enough to drop the link in the chat. For yeah. Us. I'm going to say it's I also already used Daniel's very, very fantastic social, you know, subscribe and share subscribe and follow, I think is what it's called. And, um, yeah, that thing is awesome. I I um I can't get enough of it. Yeah, Some here good stuff. Uh, is he still in the chat room? Here's I mean here's the uh yeah, there's the uh the link to the video. Oh here, here we go. So, he dropped it in there. Well that's weird. Maybe I'll pull the audio off the uh the um the hangout. Yeah, you know, that I'll, might I'll, that might be your best option. I'll start there. Yeah. In in and um, yeah, I think that's a good yeah. call. I'm almost. I, I just think it's something with my my interface is going to be my guess somehow. You know, the eye mic is going crazy. Uh, it'll be so. fixed next week for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Mike Phillips says, "Watch out, Daniel's going to raise his prices. It's reasonably priced." 
I just had to, I realized I did something with Daniel recently where I hadn't, I hadn't bought the upgrade or I missed it or whatever. And I think it's 12 bucks or something. I'm, I'm happy to pay that on an annual basis for yeah. those great, you know, if you want to see a example of what uh, Daniel's work is, that's, they're displayed in my right hand toolbar over at the average uh, You can see it in the wild over there. Just look on the right hand side. In the wild. In the wild. Or at least how I've implemented them. Daniel, are we ever going to get one of the requests I had put in is to, because I have multiple, you know, my my single site uh, hosts multiple podcasts. And it's really designed for uh, today that a lot of the functionality is kind of one podcast per site. And so I said to Daniel, hey, any chance we'll get like multiple where I can get RSS, you know, I might have the top level being the average guy.tv and then I might have my podcast which would be you know the average or the uh, home gadget geeks and cyber frontiers and all the ones that we do where I could get separate um, he knows what I'm talking about so Daniel is that coming it'd be great if that was and maybe there's, it's already there and I just didn't notice <laughs> well there's a, a new player that in theory would replace PowerPress or work in addition to PowerPress that will put subscribe buttons right underneath the play button. So you could have click here for Stitcher, click here for iTunes kind of thing. I forget the name of it. Something like, it's not Smart Podcast Player. That's Pat Flynn's. Um, but it's something like Smart Press or Player yeah. Press. I've had good some. luck with that AudioBoo player. That that thing has been dynamite. Uh, see, I have to go it. play with AudioBoo. Yeah, I well, if it, I, I got a great deal with them. I'll just be honest. <laughs> so I, I, I hesitate to talk about them because I send people over there like, oh, Jim, they're expensive. And, you know, they, it's not as expensive for me. But um, that, that, that player concept has been great, to have a player with all the podcasts listed in order where the, the, the last four are showing up. Man, my numbers have rocketed on Audioboo since I did that. So I have to check that out. I, oh, I good. Get so to... Daniel says version two is coming up someday. Someday. Well, I'm waiting on you, Daniel. So I, maybe I'm the only guy that's waiting on you. But I think for... For podcast networks, that's uh, that's a real key. So I'm I'm probably the one guy who wants that functionality out of them. So, but I'm it would be great when it came. Yeah. Yeah, Eileen says is the the after shows as good as the regular shows. Yeah, we just cut it in an hour because I don't have enough storage for my for the media file. No, I I I think you we could go on for a while. You just got to kind of cut it off and and it's, yeah. it's fun. You know, the after show what I find is the information is as good, but sometimes it's more disjointed because we're not we're purposefully not trying to stay on topic and so right. it's, um so Yeah, and usually it's you know, something that's not it's less thought out, I guess is another way of saying because it's like, well, I I'm testing this. Does that work and so we, in many yeah. cases, we're troubleshooting or... I know. Daniel, are you talking about AudioBoo? Because they did change. My contact changed, too. Just tweet them, Daniel. If you've got... if you've got, They are very responsive on Twitter. So at AudioBoo, and they'll pick it up. Yeah. I, I have learned that with tech companies. When I was um, moving the front end of the school of podcasting to... I, I just... Because I'm on HostGator. I just went, hey, for now, uh, let's go to a HostGator virtual private server... Um, and, uh, boy, they were, they were kind of taking their time and my website was down. That was what, a couple of weeks ago. The minute I put something on Twitter that said, I've been waiting six hours, boom, Bam. instantly, man. Yeah. I was like, well, I got to remember yeah. that next time. Yeah. Well, we talked about this on a couple shows ago. Somebody had one of the listeners, um, yeah. JD, I think had said, you know, how, how do I get a hold of audio boo? And I, I just tweeted him immediately. And within an hour they had gotten back to me. So it's, it's at audio boo. Hmm. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's 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 been a good little service. I, the key is not the service. The key is that player. I, I think, you know, because I no longer have players on my front page, because now I have a consolidated player that just lists the last four podcasts that were live for all the channels. And hmm. as an example, um, I mean, I had some audio, my audio, audio boom numbers by themselves, 20 or 30 listens on any average podcast, probably maybe up to 50 if it was really good and got some link. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have one that's got 440 since I put it in that configuration. And, uh, Sweet. Yeah. So, again, you don't have to use AudioBoo for that. The key was I had a consolidated, if you have multiple podcasts, and even if you don't, that visual representation on the page that lists the title of the podcast going back, is whatever it's doing, it's just triggering people to hit the play button. Oh, did you see what Mike just put in the chat room? Mixler has added a Facebook player. Oh. 
Now we're talking. Now we're talking. I hope it works in a... Um, I, half the time they work on a page, they don't work in a group. Because for me, I have a I have the private School of Podcasting Facebook group. That would be cool. Um, and most of the time, I, I have groups, not pages. Um, yeah, Daniel asked me if I've seen what's coming up on the playlist functionality for PowerPress 6. I haven't looked at it. I saw it briefly the other day. I'll let that go into 6.1 probably before I try to to do that with with uh, with some of that stuff. I like to be uh, kind of middle of the road, not cutting edge, not bleeding edge, but maybe cutting edge on some of those things. But yeah, I think if you're not, so with what's coming with PowerPress 6 and the playlist examples, I think if you're not doing something like that and you've been waiting for something to do it that way, I think that's a great way to do it. And then those would go through your stats. So yeah. when, that, when that comes out, I may cut over to it um, just because it would, it would um, give me some more detailed stats as opposed to today the audio boost stats are not very good um, but it's a sexy player and you know what sexy i didn't believe this but maybe sexy players do work oh, i see yeah. the playlist now those are cool yeah on my you're on my site i'm actually i followed the link to geeknewscentral.com slash about oh okay. uh, what daniel put in the chat room but um yeah i thought about that for for me you know if somebody had a question about microphones or you know the the typical kind of questions i'm like i could have a frequently asked question be a playlist and yeah. just have have people do it that yeah. way no it's a great way to it's a great way to do it one of those things it would be great too if maybe if sometimes they would randomize so it might you know it might move them around a little bit just so you get some of your content that mm -hmm. maybe has gone a little stale you you get that kind of moved up and moved around I don't know for what reason. I, I am not a big advocate of putting players on Facebook. I, I don't. That bothers me. I think the idea is just traffic's over there, so why not? No, get I know. No, I know. I know. I'm just saying. I'm personally like, uh, I don't know if I want. Yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah, shouldn't it, be that way. It all depends, I guess, on, you know, is it just the player? Because then how do you get them over to your website to click the links if you want them to and subscribe and on one hand, if you make it too easy to get everywhere, then they're not going to subscribe, which is a whole other conversation, I right, guess. Right. But uh, well, yeah. it's knowing your audience, right? It's knowing your audience. My tech guys aren't going to listen on Facebook. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> the, well, those aren't, you know. Well, I've heard so many people lately that have just said, "I'm done with Facebook," because they they go to send out something, and you know, now you almost have to pay if you want everybody to see it, and they're kind of like. That's not the original intent of Facebook was a way to connect with people, and now it's a way to connect to people if you don't mind spending X amount of money. And I'm like, hmm. So I've just I've heard a lot of people say I'm just I'm not using it. I'll still use it, but I'm not using I'm not banking on using that as a platform. Um, Randy uh, Cantrell had mentioned he goes, Jim, I'm seeing companies tout SSD hosting. Back to the SSID, SSD idea. Gimmick? Um, no, not at all. We've been doing uh, SSD storage in our SAN at Gallup for well over a year now, and it is lightning fast. One of the things that's better, especially in the enterprise and with host providers where we're talking SSD hosting, is that they're they're putting these together in gigantic, you know, RAID or or that that kind of. It's not really called. They don't use RAID, but it's a different configuration. Where if one drive goes, you know, it's it doesn't take the whole thing down. You can swap them out fast. But the the write speeds to these SSDs are just so so. The comparison between that and a spinning drive, even ten thousand RPM SATA, you know, uh, a SCSI or SATA drives that that are the fastest in the industry with the SSD, and especially when you stripe them together, unbelievable performance differences at the storage level. So if you're looking at a host provider and they're touting SSD storage and you can afford it, absolutely go with it. It is not a gimmick. It is rock solid. It is faster than you would ever know. Um, and, and eventually, spinning drives will go away. So we may be yeah. 20 years away from that. But the the life of a spinning drive is limited. I, you know, we're at six terabytes now. We may get to a ten terabyte drive eventually, but I just don't see that being of the the way of the future. The the storage that we get with SSD is getting they're getting better at jamming more into. Although there's some theoretical limits to that as well. 
So, you know, who knows where we'll go, but, but no, I would, um, I would absolutely, you know, Remy says in testing, uh, he found SSDs to be four times faster. Yeah, yeah. no, that's legit. I'm yeah. sure if it's two times faster, you're, you're, you know, think about, could you, how, how, think about doubling your IO, your, your read and write speeds overnight. Boom, you're in. So SSD is legit. And uh, any, any, any opportunities you get to be on anything that's running an SSD, I've got a SSD drive in my broadcast server. It's been sitting in there for two years now, and it just does it. Just hum, especially on a on a PC or something like on a server where it's not going to your your writes are not going to be on that OSS drive. That thing could last for forever, you know, from a right. from that standpoint. So um, yeah, do it. I would do it for sure. Yeah, Jim says, did I move my main properties to virtual private servers? Yes, I did. Uh, I haven't moved all of them yet. The school of podcasting. The front end is on HostGator. The back end, which nobody's using yet because I'm not done with it, um, is on Hostime uh, via the recommendation of uh, the one, the only Daniel J. Lewis. Um, and they're okay. I actually think I like HostGator support a little better. Um, Hostdime is dime, I think is how you say it. But um, yeah, so that's the, and the, here's the fun thing. The back end of the school of podcasting, I'm really like, okay, I got to do this now. And the plugin that I'm using, the theme, I'm starting to find bugs. And it's like, Neh. and then I'm not even too, because what's going to happen is I'm going to have, you know, the, the theme or basically the plugin does the, it's cool. It builds courses. It does quizzes. It does all this cool stuff. And then I tie it in with um, WooCommerce. And I'm like, I'm not even to the WooCommerce part yet. And I'm already hitting bugs. And I'm like, I'm, I'm there's a voice in my head that says I need to go look at Rainmaker before I really start doing this because that's the one from copy blogger. And I'm like, maybe I, cause everything's there works. It's not like I've got to get this to work with that and this to work with this. This is really, I'm pieces parting it. And at any time, you know, WooCommerce could break or the thing could break or, and it's like, there's a lot of pieces parts here and they're not all one piece. I'm like, maybe Rainmaker is the way to go. Or maybe I just stick with, uh, digital access pass and come up with a new way to, uh, you know, go back and use, um, what is it? Uh, optimize press. Uh, cause I saw Steve Stewart, um, did something with that and it looks a little different. I've seen a couple of people do that. So, yeah. So just about the time you think you're ready to rock and roll, I was like, man, another bug. I can't adjust that. I can't do this. So you yeah. can post the Mixler player on Facebook groups. Oh, cool. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, there's a variety there. Um, let's see. I just had a couple questions in here. Yeah, we had a question. Where are you finding these inexpensive oh, SSDs? Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, go to Amazon right now. And, and uh, if you're interested in that conversation, we talk a lot about that over at TheAverageGuy.tv. That's, this, that's my sweet spot. So if you're a tech guy and you're interested in doing some of those, talking about that stuff, we talk all things that. And then HomeServerShow.com as well as the other show that we do where it's all that tech. Um, and these guys would have opinions about which ones are the best. And, you know, Samsung makes a, an Evo drive that is really nice. But, yeah, you can go over there, and uh, and they're super I, super cheap as relative, right? Right. <laughs> super cheap to what they were two years ago. Uh, yeah. But, but you're paying, you know, you can find some great drives. Samsung drives are great. ScanDisk. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of makers. I wouldn't be... A year ago, who you bought mattered. Everybody's kind of caught up now. So, you know, I wouldn't buy the absolute cheapest one, but I may not buy the most expensive one either in the process. Um, Daniel says, I'm thinking of switching to uh, Wired Tree. They offer both pure SSD and SSD hybrids. The SSD hybrid is a great solution right now. That's the one I was just kind of talking about at the local level where you have your OS on your SSD and you have your data on a spinning drive. That's a hybrid. That's what that that is. And some data providers, some VPSs, they'll put your cache data, the stuff that you use the most will go on SSD. Everything else will go back to spinning. That's how they do hybrid and they make it work. Um, and that piece works, um, that works equally as well uh, when, you're, when you're talking about getting your data to your, Dave, I've noticed a huge difference in your site since you've moved over to the VPS. I mean, it's, it's much more responsive over at yeah. uh, a school of podcasting than it was yeah. before. So, so nice job. We're getting there. So, Anyway, but yeah, we should probably wrap her up. I know uh, the new media show is starting. Oh. I'll probably go over and check that out. Yeah, so, very uh, good. good. We'll say goodbye to uh, Mixler here. Yes, I want to stop. 
I'll throw a link to an SSD, uh, Joe, if you're yeah. still listening. I'll throw one in the chat here in just a second. And, oh, or coming. go to the average guy.tv <laughs> slash no, Amazon. You, you killed Mickler already. Oh. <laughs> That's right. I'll just throw it out in chat. There you go. Awesome, man. Hey, we'll see you uh, next week. Yeah, sounds good, Dave. Take care. All right. See you. Bye.